It's like, yeah. Uh-huh. Just those two guys, that's it. Yes. You're showing them boys how to dodge bullets, aren't you? Yeah. That's right. It's all about planning their future. It's not about uh, it's not about anything but that. It's about the kids. The main reason why I'm here is for my daughter. My ultimate goal is to come out of this and be able to make enough money so I can go buy a house in Florida so that I can visit her whenever I want. I agreed to let her go live with her dad, but in doing that, I didn't know that the law was going to be against me, and I didn't know that I was giving up my custodial rights. Stuff California and Florida. Super ends of the, ups, ends of the damn United States. Yeah, you know, and for her, she only has, she has a room in where I live now, you know? So I want to be able to have a place in Florida that we can call a home, our home, and show her that her mom can be strong, she can be just as strong, you know? I want her to be proud of me, like I'm as proud of, as of her, you know? Coming up next, just by showing up, they get points. I will work you into the ground, son. A battle of the sexes. We're bringing it all to the table. Bring it. It's day two on the Viking oil rig, and at 7 a.m., the temperature is already a sweltering 98 degrees. These worms are entering another long shift of muscle-busting, pain-inducing, mud-covered work. It's really windy, and I thought that was, it does cool you down a little bit, but it takes your breath away, so the air is really, really hot. So it, it feels like being in a sauna right now. It's ridiculous. Today's task, tripping pipe. Pull all 6,500 feet out of the ground to replace the drill bit. The Viking crew hopes to hit oil at 10,000 feet and tap into a rich deposit, West Texas crew. We're gonna trip out of the hole and change out a $60,000 bit. 60000 dollars Yeah. This is what's on the bottom of our drill string. Henry, you gotta pull up all the pipe to get to the bottom and change out that? If you were tired yesterday, you'll be tired tonight. Believe me. Dripping pipe is standard procedure on a rig, and the drill bit needs changing two to three times per haul. First, two workers set a 140-pound slip around the pipe to hold it in place. Then, using the tongs, they will disconnect the pipe in sections of three. Each 90-foot section must then be latched to an elevator that will lift or trip the pipe out of the hole. I'm going to have one of them. Go up the deck. You'll go up, tie off, make sure you're tied off all the time. One by one, each worm will make a nine-story climb, braving the winds to a tiny platform called a monkey board. With the help of a derrick man, they will stack and secure each pipe section. One slip up there, it's over. And you will be fired by the time you hit the ground if you fall. I'm going to have two of you on the floor, working tall. Eric and Michaela are up first. It's always the hardest one going first because you, I think it's a big disadvantage not to be able to watch the people in front of you. Despite her lack of experience, Michaela quickly disconnects the first pipe. I think I just ate some of your mud. Woo! It's an oil rigging, baby. But Eric is still finding his feet. I don't like oil rigging. I don't like the oil process and what it's doing to our universe. What I do like a roughneck, and that's about the extent of what I like about all this process. Stop rotating, unlatch it. Okay. When it spins, unlatch it. Eric, Eric. Right here. One of my jobs was actually to unhook the clamp, and every single time he kept having his hand on the clamp. And every single time I was like, Eric, Eric, get off the clamp, get off the clamp. I've got to unhook it. Eric, move your hand with, yeah, there you go. Eric, no, I got it, I got it. And Eric, Eric's head was always down. You know, which is really dangerous. We had to be looking up, making sure we knew where things were going. Eric, watch out! Eric, 
Meanwhile, Ramel is first up the derrick. And I think I just peed myself a little bit. That was uh, probably one of the most scariest things I've ever done. Just walking up that ladder, man. I mean, your, your arms really start to get heavy. They start to shake. Yeah, make sure it's nice and tight. If this was your office every day, I mean, I definitely wouldn't mind coming to work looking at this view. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's amazing. Pull on that bottom, pull on that one. Push it in there. Next, Steven takes the ladder. I'm not really too afraid of heights when I was climbing. The wind is what bugged me. In addition to the high winds, heavy equipment pulling the pipe out of the ground rocks the entire rig. Jeez, like I might just get knocked off. Chris's turn to climb to the monkey board, and the wind has picked up considerably. For Chris, it's not climbing nine stories, but a mountain, as it becomes apparent he's terrified of heights. Look up! Look up! Chris, look up! Coming up. Henry, who was in the bottom four? The boss decides. You're surprised about this one. Why? And the bottom four race to the finish. New York, you know, hanging off a building. When I was 18 years old, me and Mike Pearson hung 32 stories off a ledge. 32 as a death. 32 stories on a ledge like this. No harness, nothing. Your cojones are this big when, you, when, you're, when you're 18. They're like marbles when you're 49. You, you know, you start to get a little cautious on your steps. Look up! Look up! Look up! Look up! Look up! All right, I'm looking. Before I hit the, the top, my, my forearms were killing me, man. I mean, holding on was tough. Back on the floor, it's Bryce and Sandy's turn to get messy. Mud just starts gushing down. You get hit with that mud and it's like, ah, oh, it's too late now, let's just go ahead and get dirty. And I think that's really when the fun started, because then we started, we started getting into a rhythm. Got it? You got it, you got it. I think she did a little bit better than he did. He's got the big muscles, and they don't move iron. Right. Big muscles. Right. Lie moves to the floor and gets mud in her eyes, but it doesn't stop her. If you're afraid of mud or getting dirty or getting in there and intimidated, then you are not going to make it as a worm. I think what I've proven to myself is that I can tough it out with the best of the boys. And Lie's tenacity isn't the only thing giving her a perceived advantage with the Roughnecks. Lie, she's very good at, I'm not going to go as far as saying flirting, but she's very good at, like, cozying up to some of the people, in essence, and it helps her. Anytime you see the boss smile, you know it's a good thing. It's a good day. After 12 grueling hours of back-breaking work, the fatigued and filthy worms have tripped six and a half thousand feet of pipe, taking twice as long as it should. I think a lot of these guys, they, they rely on their weight or their height to really get by. But, you know, the bigger you are, the harder you fall. It's the end of day two. 
The A, Michaela and Ramel, didn't let gender or size keep them from fulfilling their worm duties. Eric struggled with tripping pipe, and Chris's fear of heights hindered his Derek climb. Your cojones are this big when, you, when, you, when you're 18. They're like marbles when you're 49. As boss Henry and his crew discuss who's in the bottom four, an all-out battle of the sexes heats up like the Texas sun. Us three girls, man, we're bringing it. We're bringing the steak to the table, and we're giving these boys a run for their money for their own job. They, they come a little bit of slack and what mm. they're doing and stuff like that. I feel like every time we get on a job, we have to work that much harder to prove that we're just as tough as they are. I've definitely got way more for having dreadlocks on any of these jobs than any of the girls have gotten for being a girl. I mean, do you watch Chris walk around the site? I mean, he'll do the job, but that's it. As long as it looks like they're really busting their tail, that's probably enough. They do what is expected of them and nothing above that. Leah would probably be the one that would juice her. Thank you. For us, the most. I mean, she knows. My she knows. My knows. She knows she looks good, and she, you know, she's not afraid to definitely admit it. I don't have a lot of brute strength, you know. This has been the toughest job for me to come out onto the oil rig and be a female on this male-dominated kind of industry. All right, Worms, how we doing? Pretty good. As you know, drilling for oil is dirty hard work. And it's dangerous. Finger check. We good, everyone? Bravo. Let me remind you guys what you are working towards. The combined salaries of all the jobs. Brought to you by the all-new 2009 Dodge Ram 1500 crew. You guys did the job, and for that, we're adding to the pot the salary of a first-year work, about $35,000. Nice. OK, Henry, who was the best on the rig? Well, there's two, Romel and Lie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Romel, his size was a factor, but he used his mind to, to understand how to do the job. Lie? She paid attention, and she got it done. Congratulations, you two. Thank you very much. It means a lot. Now for the bad news. Henry, who was in the bottom four? Steven. Safety was a big issue. Eric. Right. He wasn't aggressive enough to get the job done right, properly. Chris, he's got the muscles. I just don't think he's got the stamina. Bryce. You're surprised I'm about this? I'm very surprised. Why? But I did everything that was asked of me and did it well. Bryce has got all the tools. It shows you that muscles aren't everything. You got to know how to use them. You got to think how to move iron. This is the third job in a row. There's no women in the bottom four. Why are you outperforming the men? We get here and we have to prove ourselves. So we are always working. We're always trying to pick up some slack. We're always trying to do something. And I think because we don't necessarily have the muscles that some of these other guys have, we make up for it in our attitude and our teamwork. I sometimes feel that just by showing up, they get points, in essence. There's no really uh, women roughnecks, so there's no way to really gauge how good they're doing compared to, like, a normal roughneck would do. That, that's all I'm saying. I'll tell you right now, yeah, right. in my group, I carry two to his one bag to that 100-pound mix of wicker. And if me and you walked over right now, I'd probably carry three to your one bag. I will work you into the ground, son. And I got the muscles. I mean, I'm bringing it all to the table. Chris, what's your deal? 